with Catherine Carroll of Colorado and Wendy Partridge of Illinois. Um, and I am in northeastern Wisconsin. So um, I'm pleased to see so many people who have signed on to this webinar. I know the draw of hearing Wendy and Catherine is huge, but I'm also sure that this is a topic that many people are grappling with. Um, such different times for folks that we live and work with who are used to having a, a schedule uh, or a routine and you know used to seeing some of their um, acquaintances and friends and family and maybe that has had to be put aside as we are safer at home. Um, I'm very, I'm painfully aware of individuals that are not able to visit their family members due to um, quarantine um, and self-isolation in, in group homes. So that's another issue that folks have been dealing with. So the reason um, I suggested this conversation was that I know that um, there are many parents and families who are adapting to this, but I really wanted you all to hear from Wendy Partridge and Catherine regarding what they're doing with their um, adult children, Quinn and Mikkel. So um, Wendy and Catherine, I think I might have mentioned that we would do questions after both of you, but I've kind of rethought that and thought that maybe when questions are fresh in people's mind, they might want to ask. So we'll play that by ear. If we get some questions after Wendy, we'll take them and then move on to you, Catherine. Sounds great. Thank you. Good to see your head nod. That helps a lot. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to introduce to you Wendy Partridge, um, who is a parent extraordinaire, is how I always refer to her, who also happens to be a longtime friend. We met during customized employment training many years ago, um, before even I started at Griffin Hamas Associates. And I'm proud to have been a little bit a part of um, Quinn's growth in his uh, life since he's left high school. So Wendy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, I have this title slide, but then I have um, the, some of these slides um, after the points of your message that I'll be showing. So I'll just kind of go through these and let you get started um, talking if that sounds good. That sounds good. Thank you, Marcy. I'm, I'm going to turn my mic off so you go. OK. Do you have the slide? Are they seeing slides of Quinn or or should I just start? Hold on, hold on. You're... Thank you for reminding me that I needed to unmute. So, Wendy, how about um, you just kind of briefly go over what you're going to talk about, and then oh, as okay. we come bring up the slides, we'll um, okay. have an opportunity to talk even more um, to address some of these points that you wanted to make today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Quinn has a, a mini micro enterprise, which is um, making kraut, fermented food, has been around for thousands of years. And um, he, we discovered that he had some health issues. And so we started making our own kraut for him. And then we started learning that that might be a benefit to other people. Um, so what we'll be talking about today is just how his business um, has evolved and changed and um, how our current um, situation is affecting and somewhat benefiting his um, micro enterprise. So that's what we'll be talking about. Kraut and how it, how the business is going. Yeah. Was that it? Did you want me to, am I just? 
I'm sorry for the um, miscommunication. Um, if you'd prefer that I go back to the previous slide, I will do that. Um, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to start doing pictures. Um, yeah, if you do you want me to jump into it now and just start talking about all of it? I didn't know if I was just doing an introduction or. This is your time, Wendy dear. You oh, okay. can jump into it and roll with it. And I know that this picture was um, more like the beginning of where he started. So the only picture I see is introducing Catherine and Mikkel. That's what all I'm seeing too, Marcy. Um, well, now, so. isn't that interesting? Because I have Dirt is Good, Building Social Capital Volunteering. Well, I wonder what's happening. Marcy, you might have to stop sharing for a second and then share the um the new slide. Okay, thank you. But, yeah, I think you're just sharing the wrong part of the PowerPoint. Okay. How does that work? That works great. OK, <laughs> no wonder you're wondering what was going on. I'm sorry. So okay. this, was, this was the first slide that I thought I had put up. Um, okay. Introducing Quinn's world famous Kraut. Right, so as I said, um, Quinn um, has had some health issues over the years and one of the things that we're doing is really focusing on healthy food and clean food and real food. And um, what we discovered was a lot of people would benefit from that and uh, without getting into too much science, but I do have to um, you know, continue Quinn's work by kind of sharing that your microbiome really has a lot to do with your immunity. Um, Kraut and other foods, certain foods help you make glutathione. Um, and when you're eating good, clean food and whole food, then that means that you're eating less of the not so good stuff. So that's um, kind of what we set about doing. And um, Quinn is really motivated by income so that he can spend money um, visiting uh, friends in Chicago and um, dining out. And he's really into parking garages. Um, so that's a whole nother, you know, talk, but he just, he loves parking garages and he loves architecture and he, he loves going to the city. So, um, uh, and, and so what we wanted to do was, uh, and we, uh, really talk about one of the things that we know is the good things in life. Health has a lot to do with the good things in life. We also, you know, contribution, um, you know, helping him, uh, be known in a respectful way as a hard worker, um, you know, as we have here, dignity and um, the dignity of work and earning his own spending money. Um, and so he uses communication to uh, typing and social media to connect with his customers um, and to thank them for their purchase. Um, he's also saving for a dog. Um, let's see. He's uh, he's yes, he has also contributed by um uh, giving some of his crowd to people, a uh, food pantry and, um, some other folks. Um, and this other stuff is a little bit unrelated. This was, um, from another talk, but, uh, but so the more that he, um, shares his abilities, the more people recognize him as a guy who has something to offer and, um, also helps with, building good conversation and just honoring him and, and having good things to talk about when he's interacting with friends and family and um, neighbors and people in the community. So um, I think that's particularly helpful um, and useful now to have hope, hopeful topics to talk about amidst some of the darkness that's happening in the world. Um, it's also, uh, you can go to the next slide. Let's see. Um, and so Quinn does have apple trees. He also has garlic and um, in the past has um, shared information about the benefits of garlic and did a little talk on that. So that was kind of fun. And he really likes gathering people together. So that was that was one of our challenges. Um, that was the first thing I thought of when all of this stuff started happening was, you know, Quinn is really into getting together with groups of people and 
um, I knew that this was going to that was going to be particularly challenging for him. So um, this is just a picture of his circle of support. And um, we met, oh gosh, not that many months ago. And everyone got together and it was facilitated by um, a wonderful friend, um, Shelly Nessman out of Vancouver. And um, one of the things that we came up with um, of many things because Quinn was trying to figure out how to be invited more to things and finding ways to you know connect with more people. And um, one of the things that, a few of the folks came up with was a customer appreciation party. And uh, it's, it's just so funny because it's Quinn is really into hosting parties and planning parties. And um, uh, so that was just a perfect fit. So it was something that was right under our noses and I had never thought of it. Um, so we were super excited and that's going to be happening in, in about a month. So we're excited about that. Uh, next slide. Here's Quinn delivering his kraut. Um, he does it in all kinds of weather. He delivered in the rain uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, one of the things that's that's pretty easy for us is um, Quinn likes to drive around and um, we can just drop the crowd off on their doorstep and uh, pick up the check. They usually, you know, stick the check under a rock or something like that. And um, so so that part hasn't been uh, difficult for this particular um for his situation, um, he hasn't, you know, delivering, um, it has been the same. Actually, it, we've had more people interested in Kraut, maybe because they've been home and they've had time to think about him and connecting with him. But I think also people had sort of a heightened awareness about, you know, strengthening their immune systems. So that's been pretty cool. Uh, next slide. Um, and then again, this was, yeah, this was another talk. So you can just go to the next one. And maybe we don't have any more pictures. I'm not sure. But Wendy, um, I, I left this. You can have to mute your mic for just a moment. Okay. I particularly left this um, slide because through everything, Quinn has been able to continue doing these random acts of kindness, um, trying to help out um, his neighbors. Um, I, I forget whether we've had, I, I think we've had snow since the, you know, since the Safer at Home came. And so I wanted you to share, if you wouldn't mind, please, um, how Quinn has been making up for not seeing people in the party atmosphere like he has. Um, if you wouldn't mind co uh, covering that, that is why I left this slide in here. Sure thing. So just one way that he can connect with people um, is paying attention to folks' birthdays and reaching out to them, whether it's neighbors or their friends and just dropping off a, a note or a card. Um, the Random Acts of Flowers is um, an idea that we stole from actually a not-for-profit. Um, they And so we just, Quinn grows flowers. So in the summertime, we just go and drop off flowers at different people's houses or their businesses or whatever. So it's just kind of a fun surprise. Um, he is shovel. He shovels his neighbor's sidewalk when he's um, up for that, and um, he has two tree swings in the backyard. So he invites other people to, you know, enjoy them. They're super fun. Um, he has like 15 apple trees, so he's always trying to um, give away some of his apples. Um, going to the bank is always fun. Just making conversation with them about. Uh, things that are good that are happening in his life. And certainly bank uh, tellers don't have as many people. I mean, they don't at all right now, but have as many people going in and, and chatting with them. So that's nice. Um, and then um, one of the things that we've been doing um, at this time is um, following up with customers with thank you notes, sharing recipes that you can use um, for the crowd. Um, just different celebrations on social media. Quinn has a Facebook page, um, World, Quinn's World Famous Kraut. So if anyone wants to join that, we'd love to have you. Um, so sharing recipes, thank you notes, party planning, um, just sharing different articles about health and how fermented foods help your um, can be a benefit to your health. Um, 
And I think that's about it. I, I wanted to also just share some of the tasks that Quinn does with the kraut. So he pounds the kraut, labels the jars, pours it in the jars, and delivers. Um, he also composts. So we try to um, encourage people to think about composting and gardening um, as not just, I mean, healthy food, but also just the act of um, growing some of your own food. And um, just kind of simple things in life and um, knowing that some of those simple things can be very profound for your health and your well-being. So. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. If I could add, oh, I'm sorry, you have to mute. <laughs> um, if I could add um, a couple more um, thoughts, um, I should have introduced you as a um, extremely supportive parent who um, opened up a um, one person Scylla with Quinn. And the fact that um, although he may not be seeing quite as many people during this time, he does see his support workers. So would you like to address maybe some of the things that he's been able to do with his support workers, if there's anything? Um, I think, you know, working on his yard, taking care of his home. Um, he does a lot of different chores around the house, so they just kind of set it up. We we kind of like to think of Quinn's house as like a smart house specific to Quinn. So certain things we like his dishwasher, unless the dishwasher is open and the door is out, he's not going to put the dishes away. So, you know, it's just kind of a fun little prompt. Um, and um, uh one of his support workers is a fantastic uh, connector and has gotten quite a few customers interested in purchasing his kraut. So that's been a great benefit. Um, and uh, what else? They just go for hikes together and um, helping with the party planning. So caring for his home is what he does a lot. He, um, he worked at Home Depot for the last five years also um, as uh, uh, using customized employment principles. And this was the first summer where he did not do that, so. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, because that's something he enjoyed. And uh, what I would like to um, note about that is that that was a job that Wendy developed um, and negotiated with Home Depot. And while she, remained quite persistent in making that happen. Um, in the past year or two, Home Depot has come to her asking if they know of any other individuals who might be looking for work because they've appreciated having Quinn so much. So Wendy's getting a, a reputation as a job developer besides uh, um, parent extraordinaire. So I believe we've covered most I'm going to go to the next slide just in case, but um, I wondered, are there any questions of Wendy at this time? If there aren't, we'll wait till the end of the session. I'm afraid I'm not seeing any questions in the chat box. So if uh, you see any, Wendy, do you see? Okay, well, if we don't have any questions now, let's um, move forward and um, I will be introducing Catherine Carroll from Colorado to you. Um, she's provided us with some slides about the very um, interesting life and full life that uh, she lives with Mikkel. Catherine? You can take it away. Hello, everybody. Well, happy Friday. Um, I wanted to start with, uh, for a lot of us families, and I'm sure for Wendy this happened too, we start very young with the dream. And I think for families that um, are, are successful in supporting their families, they have either had a dream or they've been encouraged to dream. And Mikkel was, um, is adopted. She came to us at uh, three and a half months old. And uh, the dream at this this young age was always for her to be a regular 
participant in the community like everybody else and to have the freedom. We have um, a theme in our in our work with Mikkel is to shine beautiful, is shining beautiful because Mikkel's Korean name is Mi Chong, which translated means shining beautiful. And so that has become kind of our North Star in trying to work through all the challenges that we had when she first went to um, school. She was the first one to be included in each of her schools and she ended up graduating outstanding senior. Mikkel is now 37 years old and she um, has cerebral palsy. She uses technology to walk or talk. So technology is a big part of our life and has been since she was in second grade and, and even earlier with her power wheelchair. So you'll hear me talk a little bit about technology today and um, and uh, there you go. So next slide, Marcy. Okay, so this is an issue. <laughs> let's, let's be real about some of this. It's kind of overwhelming to keep with your old life, pre-COVID life, and your new life, and um, the breaks and 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 uh, the opportunities for separation of between parents is is not been quite as as good and i think that's true for all those folks that are working in the field too it's like where's my break when do i get a, you know that transportation time that windshield time was kind of helpful to decompress and and stress and we found that in our own home is that you know both Mikkel feels a little bit like this and and i feel about this especially in the beginning but we we've kind of moved into a, a phase of we went from kind of shock and awe to how do we fill this time to okay this is our our near normal we don't call it new normal we call it a near normal experience because what we're trying to do is as wendy said with quinn Mikkel is a very gregarious outgoing in the community all the time i mean she rarely is at home and we live in downtown denver not too far from the grocery store that she and hap she has gone to for 25 years and they had two deaths from COVID there. So she doesn't go there anymore. And um, we had a big outbreak in our in our particular neighborhood. We live in a, um, and I live with Mikkel now. She lived independently for with roommates for a number of years, but turnover becomes an issue. And we found that uh, Mikkel needed some anchor and that has worked out really well. And um, it works out pretty well for us, surprisingly uh -huh. enough. So, um, we live in a vertical village, so our experience is probably a, a lot more urban than many people. Uh, we live in an 11-story high-rise. Mikkel is a homeowner. She uses Section 8 to purchase her own home. And uh, so we all work for her, and she's a team of, of four women who provide her personal care, um, supported living kinds of activities. And, um, and we've been very fortunate that everybody's been able to to stay, but there were some adjustments in working with that team to, uh, in a sense, isolating them so they could continue to work. And so we had to look at not just only Mikkel's needs, but the needs of her team to keep this a vibrant and energetic place. Because that's one of the things is we want to shine beautiful and we weren't going to let COVID um, deter us from that. So next slide. So we use FaceTime, and, and again, we use technology quite a bit. This is another woman with uh, Wynn Charles who has her own podcasting business like Mikkel. We actually hired Wynn to help Mikkel start her own podcasting business. And Wynn is um, a journalist, and she has cerebral palsy. And these two girls get on, and they talk about their experiences with um, cerebral palsy and being strong women strong and willful women which <laughs> they both are and uh, but FaceTime is one of those tools that we have actual used it's a great check-in for her friends and uh, and has been um, a real lifesaver in terms of uh, maintaining some of those connections and I'll go through some of these other tools with you as we go through next time So, Mikkel uses an um, uh, iPad for communication. She is nonverbal, but she is uh, certainly able to communicate. And one of the things that we've used a lot with um, this, and I, I don't know that we have time to go through these videos, but she uses Siri. And we've been able to work with a, a professional a speech and language therapist who uses augmentative uh, communication strategies 
to help Mikkel. So we are able to get her connected through her iPad to talk to Siri, to text and call people. And so that's one of the ways that we've really been able to do that. So again, this technology focus has been a big part of it. Mikkel has a bracelet business. Uh, sell. She's been making bracelets for a long time. She used to do professional um, speaking back before uh, we started going to webinars. She's not a big webinar girl, and that's why I kind of take over this role for her because she's she's so engaging and, and gets feedback from her audience, and, and uh, webinars just don't provide her enough feedback to make that worthwhile for her. So we've looked at some other ways. We had to kind of rethink her business because she used to travel around, make five or seven hundred dollars an hour doing her presentations. It's mostly spoke, talking about transition and um, technology. And we started. Uh, she started. She's always had an interest in fashion, so she started making bracelets. And how this works is that she designs them and her team strings them. But she's an amazing salesperson. And that's probably her biggest skill. And she loves, loves, loves to sell. And she, she kind of sets her hook in you and she reels you in. <laughs> and she's, she's pretty funny about that and uh, really gets a big joy out of it. So she often would go to conferences. We still do conferences and she'd have a, you know, a pop-up market that she would sell her stuff. And, but all the conferences, we had like five conferences that we were going to do this summer and they're all gone. And so we've had to rethink how we're going to keep her engaged and, and still making and producing. And so we, as I'll tell you a little bit, we started an Etsy store. And so her bracelets are available on Etsy. If anybody wants to, to uh, partake in that, we, will, we should be delightful. But Mikkel's life has been about community. And she's got a real strong network of friendships and vibrant experiences. And most of these people in this picture have been with Mikkel for since she graduated from high school. Jerome, who's on the couch with her, has been a, he's 15 years he's been her good friend. And um, we finally felt like it was safe enough for him to come over and uh, have a, a no touching, no hugging kind of experience. But that was part of it. But Mikkel just loves, you know, this is with her with friends that film on the rocks and skiing. She decided she's not a big skier anymore, but she loves a good party and hanging out with her family. And so those are the things that have really shifted for her on this. So next slide. So again, Mikkel is as an older adult that we've had birthday parties and she always has a Christmas party and everybody comes together they come over and hang out and these are this are you know her brothers on the on the on my left anyway she, then they were programming her wheelchair to talk to her TV and all that and her cousin and and her good friend Ian and Jerome um, Ian was a barista at Starbucks and really was instrumental in helping us architect Mikkel's community because he was a he was a community activist and so we just connected over Starbucks and um, and we started going to the parties. Jerome would go to the parties with us and we developed this wonderful relationship. And uh, Taylor, next to Mikkel the Blonde, has um, been with Mikkel for eight years now and continues to be a big part of her life, although she's moved on to working for Ball Corp, um, which is Aerospace Engineering Group. And, um, and then on there's Ian again, who's now working for the city of and county of Denver doing um, environmental health kinds of practices. And Lauren, um, who is our webmaster, who was a former roommate of Mikkel, and up on the upper right is her sister-in-law and her grand, her nephew. So big community. I mean, every day, two or three times a day, we're getting out there and doing this stuff. So this is how it was pre-COVID. So next slide. And this is how it is afterwards. <laughs> so we have brought the community in and we've really looked at, um, you know, how we get that, that, that laughter and that fun and that engagement kinds of things. So one of the things that we've done is Wednesday night dinners. And it started off with um, the girls that were working for Mikkel were bored out of their minds too. So we started looking at baking and cooking and, and, and trying to get them to their young women who were just in the process of establishing themselves. And, and so learning how to cook. So Mikkel and, and the girls would go on YouTube and, and the food network and they'd be looking for recipes. And then we just created this idea where we'd have a bake off. 
So it started off with a bake-off. So two of the girls competed, and Mikkel was the judge of appearances, and I was the judge of taste. Um, and uh, so we had, it was fun to see the girls get, and get competitive. And so we started creating the community within our home in a safe environment. And that met the need for this spontaneous, fun kind of thing. So we've maintained this, at this uh, experiment with Wednesday night dinner. So every week we pick a theme. So we've had Asian night, we've had um, Italian night, we've had breakfast for dinner night, we've had all sorts of them. And then we play cards or we have uh, we played um uh, what's the stacking block game <laughs> i forget where you knock everything out we played that one and uh, these are all things that mikhail really enjoys the conversation and the vibrancy and taylor um we threw a party i mean mikhail loves parties as you could see from her prior slides so we were able to send out one of the other girls who had connections with a party central and um, we threw a big engagement party for, for Taylor because she'd been dating this guy for five years and, um, and she got engaged finally, you know, we said finally. And so we decided, well, we're going to throw a big party for her. And that was still socially safe because all the girls are, are, are social distancing and not interacting in unsafe ways. And we've set up protocols for them to all come in, wash their hands, wear their masks when they go out, all those kinds of things. But the goal is that Mikkel has an amazing day at least once a week, at least once a week. And so she has something that breaks out of the routine because I think for Mikkel, one of the, the killers for her is routine. I mean, and she's like a lot like me. I'm not, I'm not great at routine. I start dulling over. And we saw that happening for her. We actually saw a little bit of depression set in when this thing started going on because, you know, where do you go for coffee? Where she Like Quinn, she loves to go to the bank. The bankers have known her forever. She's like a little rock star in our community. And now all of a sudden she can't talk to anybody and nobody can come up to her. And she used to say hello to all the neighborhood dogs and connect with everybody because she, if she didn't talk to five or 10 people outside of the home a day, it was not a great day for her. So we really had to think about this. And we did this as a team and um, I kind of facilitated the discussion, but many of these ideas came from her amazing and wonderful team. Next slide. So Zoom, we're all, you know, we're, we're not quite Zoom zombies, but I think I'm gonna turn into one soon. But this is Gretchen, and Gretchen is the person who supports Mikkel's technology. And so we, we started doing a lot of Zoom calls. Well, at first Zoom was kind of like, uh, you know, Mikkel's like, really, this is just about as boring as dirt. And then Gretchen stumbled on this whole thing about using the back screens. Well, Mikkel's a huge Bronco fan. And along with her brother and my, my, his whole family, we're just all big Broncos fans. So when she put this background up, Mikkel just lit up like the 4th of July. And then we started playing with this. So Mikkel loves Starbucks. And part of the near normal thing is that she can't go into Starbucks where she used to sell her bracelets and do everything, but she can do the drive through so she does a daily errand of getting coffee for everybody, including me, and, and that really satisfies her. So Gretchen started playing with Starbucks, and, and you know she had her picking up the Starbucks. Now, what was really interesting about this is Gretchen was pregnant, having kind of a complicated pregnancy, and was in the hospital at the time that she was doing this. So in her hospital room, she creates this green screen that makes, you know, keeps that fade in and out thing a little bit at bay. And so they started having this very mutual, I'm bored out of my mind kind of thing. How do we have fun with this? So Gretchen started taking, and, and this is a tip for some of you that are, are doing Zoom kind of calls, is that she started putting all of Mikkel's, she went to the King Supers and she put in a picture of the aisles of King Supers. Then she went to the bank and put a picture of the bank. She put the interior of, um, of Starbucks in there. And then Mikkel loves, she has a purse thing, she, you know, we all have something that we really love to buy. Well, for Mikkel, it's purses. So in order to keep the expense down a little bit, what we would go to is the girls would take her to Goodwill. So she found a picture of the Goodwill. And all of a sudden, Mikkel started feeling like, oh, it's still out there. Because in her mind, I think she thought, I can't get to it. It doesn't exist anymore. And somehow Gretchen tapped into that. And so they could have conversations and and really have extended conversations about, well, what purse would you buy? 
And then that led to Mikkel doing some online purchasing. So we started teaching her about online purchasing. She purchased a couple purses um, off of Etsy. One of them, um, she gets to learn the return process because it wasn't anything that she ordered. <laughs> she got this random purse that didn't look like anything. So now she had to learn the patience. And so we started introducing her to online shopping. And that's one of the things And I've noticed with my mom, who's 91, we had to introduce her to online shopping and teaching that. So I think that's a skill set that we can work on going forward. Next slide. So we took this time to, Mikkel had a website, she's had one for a long time, but it really was dated in format. So we took this time to update her website and reconfigure it. She picked out the colors. She, you know, she. We had the logo, but we changed the colors of the logo, and and so we all both were building that, and that was a billable skill set because I'm 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 her job coach basically. So because we don't have the capacity here in Colorado yet, uh, we have a new office of employment first, which I've been involved with because I would love to retire from that at some point, but after interviewing 17 providers in in the city and county of Denver. Um, there was nobody to do it, so I am it, and I'm trying to work to get my replacement. That's part of my succession planning. But um, so I am her job coach. I work through a, a personal services agency. I'm an employee from APASA, as we call them, and uh, so this was billable time for me because one of the challenges for um, a lot of employment providers is what services do you provide. So rebuilding her website was a good. Good thing to do. Colorado also pays retainer fees uh, or retention fees for um, both supported living and um, employment. So to keep people from peeling off and 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 individuals having some um, having to hire new people. Next slide. So about a oh I was driving with my son. We were going to the Black Canyon National Park, and I was talking about you know what's our next step for Mikkel because. Um, like Wendy, we um, use the group action planning process or the hope teams or bringing groups of people together to kind of think about what's next because we're always looking at what is next for Mikkel. And my son said, you all need to do a podcast. And I said, podcast, what? And uh, so that's, as I mentioned, we hired Wynn to help us because I knew nothing about it, didn't know anything. But at this point, we've had... Um, 2,600 downloads um, on our podcast. It's been just over a year, and um, we have a following now. And we've interviewed people from uh, Griffin Hammes. Actually, I posted today a thing on parents and uh, uh, engaging parents in empl customized employment with Beth Keaton, who is um, the executive director of Griffin Hammes. Uh, we had one with Shay Tannis last week uh, with Mikkel. She, she came to visit us before pre Pre-COVID, and uh, Shay Tannis is uh, co-director of the uh, Coleman Institute, which is really focused on technology. And uh, then we have interviews with, uh, you know, Jim Warren, who is a Native American, um, who's done a lot of advocacy in that community and disability, and has a, a film that's out there that's called Seventh Generation, which I highly recommend. And uh, so we look at what would our community like to hear from us? And we look at trying to give Mikkel that um, inspiration. And podcasting has filled in that gap for us during this time because she knows she's here to work. She gets paid to do the podcast. Um, and it helps continue to develop her communication skills on her iPad using touch chat. Next one. So we've got a YouTube channel. So we do a lot of YouTubing too, and uh, particularly Gretchen and Mikkel are doing an awful lot in that area. So uh, continue to check in with us. If you just Google Shining Beautiful Series and YouTube, you will find us. And we are trying to demonstrate um, our use of technology for other people who may not have the technology support and, and let people know what's possible. Next slide. And here's Mikkel's Etsy store. So uh, Selena is also, we, we're very lucky. Selena, who works for us, is um, we've got a lot of creative folks working for us right now that are artists who didn't have any experience in the field, um, but are eager learners and 
are picking this up. And so Selena has, uh, she's an artist, so she understands how to market that. And so she has really taken over the photography of Mikkel's stuff to make it look visually engaging much better than I was doing. And that's been a, a lot of fun. And also the girls are helping her do the social media as I am to promote her podcast and her her sales and we've had we've had some sales off of Etsy and uh, we also did a thing because um, we put out we have podcast uh, postcards and so we put them in the building and Mikkel's developed some new relationships in the building as people have left her notes so she's kind of got pen pals in the building because you can't um, necessarily um, talk to each other close up but we've been kind of creating some fun relationships that way within our, our building. Next slide. And this is Mikkel and I, we have our morning coffee with all the girls. And so coffee is a, a big ritual that we have every day. And she also, uh, we've had handstand competitions where she rates me on how I do that because I like to work out. And uh, so we were doing ha hallway handstands and the girls would kind of rate whether I did it well. And we're just thinking of all the different ways that we can um, keep her engaged uh, and moving. So I hope that's helpful. Extremely helpful, Catherine. Thank you. Um, I want to be sure to um, give Wendy some time to comment because I'm sure she heard some things that um, the that that is both you both have in common as you um, brought to our attention. But at this point, um, before we move too much further, um, we've got a few minutes left, and um, we could be taking questions or comments if anyone had them for the chat box. And at this point, um, Wendy, I need to apologize profusely that I forgot to do a contact slide for you. So if you would please put your contact information in the chat section um, at, at your convenience, that would be wonderful. But are there any questions um, of Catherine or uh, Wendy? While you all are, are writing a question, I'm going to ask both of you, um, we're aware that there is a direct support professional workforce crisis and um, getting recruiting and retaining um, DSPs or support folks um, can be an issue. I know that um, Wendy uses some very interesting um, techniques for kind of like perks for um, encouraging the direct support staff um, or thanking them. Catherine, um, would you like to address that? Do you do anything besides provide a ton of fun? Well, Mikkel is, uh, as I said, she's a master salesperson. Uh, she really is. I don't know where she gets it, but she's just amazing. So oftentimes she will give people bracelets knowing that they will support her business later. <laughs> But we did some of the flowers things that um, that uh, Wendy talked about, um, but within our building. So we put flowers out for everybody, encouraging them to stay positive during this time of COVID. And um, one of the gals, when she was out shopping, picked up uh, dollar flowers. And then we wrote little note cards to people on her floor to do that. And, uh, you know, really trying to practice that random acts of kindness. Um, so uh yeah i think that you know and she's really good at giving those things out to people and like when shay came to do the podcast um she gave that and knowing that shay would promote her business <laughs> those kinds of things so she's pretty clever about all that <laughs> she sounds very clever very clever wendy did you want an opportunity to talk about um some of the ways that you um recognize the work of the direct support workers to help encourage them? Um, sure. I mean, I think one of the things we've done is we had a survey, um, like a little quest question about things that they like, favorite places they like to get their pizza from or whatever. And uh, just then when they do um, go a little bit be above and beyond. We've given out gift cards based on places that they know they like. So they, uh, and they really enjoy that survey. Um, I'd love to share it with all of you. We recently moved. So um, you'll have to email me because um, I think it's, it's hands down one of the greatest things um, that, that really got 
DSP is excited about just feeling rewarded and recognized and connected with. Um, but in, in relation to um, uh, recruiting uh, direct support people, uh, we spent a lot of time in the last year at kind of a crunchy cafe and got to know a lot of people there. And um, so would encourage people to connect us with people who might be interested in um, working with Quinn. Also the YMCA, um, friends that we know in town, um, our church, we've connected with some people that might know people um, that might want to work with Quinn. Um, and then we've got, we go to a couple of different pubs and have connected with people that way. Um, and, uh, and a lot of times we'll, if it's a friend or family member, we'll just give them maybe an essential oil or a little gift card for connecting us with someone who has, um, you know, stuck with us for three or six months or, I mean, six or six months or a year. So. And I thought it was really, um, generous of you too to kind of surprise people with some paid time off that isn't something that comes with the job but that's one of the ways that you help recognize above and beyond as well or at least you have in the past yeah hi marcy i'm going to mention that mikhil has a facebook site too um it's called the shining beautiful series on facebook and we post an awful lot of stuff we post our podcast links down there as well but you can find her. If you just Google the Shining Beautiful series podcast, you can find her. It'll come up on Google. Excellent. Have any questions been posted in chat? I'm afraid I'm not seeing any. There are. There are some. And um, go for it. Uh, uh, Wendy, they want to know if you ship to other states. Uh, yeah, we sure do. Um, and that's one of the cool things about crowd is it doesn't have to be refrigerated, you know, immediately. So we can we can do that. Um, I did list the name of the Facebook page and then. Um, uh, I see Linda's got a question about the crowd. You know, we're really still trying to get a feel for things. So how it works is people um, send a check or if it's through mail um, or PayPal and um, he receives his um, his payment for his work. So that was the answer um, relating to Linda's question. Um, somebody else asked if we um, yeah, shipped out of state. Yes, we do. And then um, another person just said they were interested in learning more. So my email is there and I'm um, happy to share with you our journey and um, how things have progressed over the last, um, I think the crop business, then the crop, the crop business has kind of been a, um, a response to just other work that he's done. So, you know, it just, it kind of grows, ebbs and flows. For Quinn, it's mostly about making money and meeting people. I mean, he likes the crowd um, and he is reaping the benefits of being healthy, but um, he's all about partying and, uh, I kind of call him the Hugh Hefner of South Beloit, Illinois. He'd like to just be with the ladies and, you know, live large. But, uh, uh, Mikhail, the same way. And he, uh, you know, the, the selling is a vehicle to connecting, and, and, but she loves money. So that's the other motivator. She does like to make money. Um, yeah. and you can find somebody asked about where you can find her Etsy store. If you go to Retro Tango, we, we, uh, we had another site and then it wouldn't let us change. So it's Retro Tango, the Shining Beautiful series. And you can find it there. And um, I will send it to Marcy and she can she can share it with everybody too. Or if I get a chance, I'll post it up here on the chat box. Thank you. I think I wanted to add one thing. Um, and it reminded me of, uh, I called Catherine a couple of years ago. I don't know, maybe it was five, 10 years ago. It was a while ago. But I think one of the things that Catherine instilled in me and, and one of the things that I've really held on to uh, with a lot of people that have guided me over the years um, in, in overcoming tough situations is just believe that, you know, there's something better around the corner, even when you can't see it. And to just keep trying to be creative and be um, hopeful and uh, think to really dwell in possibilities. And while I think, you know, we've got a lot of phrases that we throw around, you really have to dig deep and, um, and have that faith that, that good things are coming. So 
Absolutely. I, I, you know, and I, I have to check myself on that, too, because, you know, when we were all faced with this and I started seeing Mikkel get a little depressed, it was like, well, how do I do that? And then, you know, you kick back into that. Well, OK, what 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 are our resources available to us? How do we look at this differently? How can we create stuff? So I think that how can we is a good question to um, um, to do that. And it really is. I think what COVID has done for all of us is force us to be a lot more creative. And, you know, we kind of create the kick the creativity can down the road but now we have to and it's right now it's not down the road it is right now and um and and i think we have to let go of what was and just look at what is thank you that that is um great advice and um we have colleagues on the line from hawaii um, they call this Aloha Friday for us. Um, and they had mentioned that since the islands are based on tourism, that there's a tremendous amount of um, impact economically and I'm sure emotionally and physically for folks um, there. But um, around us, around me, which is also a tourist area, I just find businesses becoming so creative how they have adjusted and come up with new ideas um, within their businesses to put them forward. And that's what I hear from both of you as well. Um, I'm ecstatic for Quinn that his business has grown during this time. That is um, a, a, a wonderful positive to our difficult times. Yeah, I just want to, we're delivering 20 jars of kraut today in the Chicago suburbs. So, yeah. It's getting, it's that getting wild. Awesome. We're undercutting the boutique uh, ferment sale. So that's kind of fun too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That is. Have any more questions come through? Um, there was a question about Seventh Generation, which is a movie I highly, highly recommend uh, looking at disability and um, the experience of uh, Native Americans through our history. It's a very positive movie, very hopeful, despite the great tragedy that people have experienced. And um, Jim is also a vocational rehabilitation counselor and, and does a lot of work in South Dakota. He's um, uh, he's, he's a phenomenal man and I think one of the things that we can do is just reach out to people and connect with them I mean I didn't know Jim I met him at a conference in Washington and and said you know he was interested in podcasting I was interested in his story and and Mikkel really had a great time in interviewing him and I think um, for me is that Mikkel continues to learn and that she continues, I don't want her to atrophy during this period of time. And I think there's an opportunity. I have my special shirt on. I have these little shirts that I wear. This is, everyone has a story. I think this time is a great time to capture the richness of the stories that we have. And if you're a provider working with people, use the new technology like Powtoon or, you know, Zoom or, or these other things. To, Canva is another great resource. They have some nice animated short videos to capture the story in a visual way because we in our field are just rich with words but the primary way that people learn and process information 60 percent of how we process information is visual now so the more visuals that you can provide for people and you know whether that's a portfolio for an employer or you're you know you're trying to create a vendor network or whatever but take advantage of the technology and the time to tell better stories. Thank you so much for that, Catherine. And I know that that's something that um, Wendy didn't really go into, but that Quinn utilizes facilitated communication. And that I believe um, has really opened up his world from my vantage point, Wendy, um, because um, we all know how frustrating it is when people are not understanding what what's within us. And um, this has given him an opportunity to um, really dig deep and express himself with in ways that we we just did, were not aware that it um, that was going on. That's great. That's a, we have a Mikkel has a friend who uses facilitated communication 
and it it's you know he's a poet he has a small business because he creates poetry and they print it on t-shirts and he sells it that's called lopsided hearts by the way i'll put a plug in for one of our local businesses great but, uh, this is a time to you know michael uses an app called pictello um, which is a 20 dollar app and she records all we've taken pictures and recorded um in her own voice how to um you know make her coffee in the morning how to make her bracelets and you know she sets limits on what they can do for her or whatever but she uses that as a training so she trains her own team um using technology and i think this is the time to really start bolstering that stuff if you're looking for something to do look at these apps you know help people construct self de self-determined tools if i can i don't sure if that's the right way to say that but where they have the power and the control to shape mm -hmm. their life and become less dependent. So, anyway. Hi, Eric. <laughs> Are there last questions or um, do we need to wrap it up? I know that we're coming to the end of our hour. I do so appreciate um, Catherine and Wendy offering the lives that they're leading with uh, Mikkel and Quinn and um, overcoming. Uh, the situations that were, were, what did you call it? Our, our near life? Is that what you called it, Catherine? Uh, near normal. Near normal. Near, near normal. I like that one. Um, so as we move forward with our near normal, I hope you'll take what Catherine and Wendy have shared and feel free to um, connect with them. I'm sure they, they both would um, enjoy hearing from you and, and sharing more of uh, their the businesses of Quinn and Mikkel. Um, I've listened to some of the Shining Beautiful series podcasts and that's how I got such a kick out of uh, your Wednesday um, events. Uh, I thought it was really kind of fun how those Wednesday events were helping those uh, support workers learn how to cook, that uh, this was all new to some of them. So that was, that was interesting. And I just love that Mikkel chooses the by appearance. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a harsh judge too, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if I make a cake in the size of a purse because she likes purses so it's really got them thinking and having a lot of fun with it so <laughs> yeah yeah awesome well Wendy did you have any last minute thoughts you wanted to share before we close I think one of the um the biggest things that has been um important for me is to to really not be afraid to ask other people for their ideas and their their encouragement and their juice so like when i reached out to Catherine, i didn't know her but i knew she was someone that had good things so i wasn't afraid to to reach out and call her so i want to encourage people to to take that step to reach out and get that interchange because i i have learned creativity and hopefulness in a new way over the last 20 years so you know you really have to have to say i'm going to learn and you learn from other people so you know don't be afraid to reach out and also just try to surround yourself with as many creative people because that has a synergistic effect and and we really need that so and i and i think because of our creativity and what we've learned we've been able to um, help other people grow in their um in their work and whatever they're doing. So I and guess so glad to hear that conversation really led to all this wonderfulness. That's awesome. <laughs> it's nice our circles have come back around to each other. That's great. Isn't yeah. that fun? Well, thank you all for joining us today, and uh, we appreciate your continued um, involvement in our Friday conversations. Uh, we look forward to meeting with you again, and I uh, want to wish you just a great rest of the day to our colleagues in Hawaii. It's 8 o'clock there now, um, so you have a great day ahead of you. Um, those of us in the Midwest and the East, we've just got a couple more hours until it's by o'clock somewhere so um you all have a great um afternoon uh be well be safe and uh be hopeful marcia and all of you beautiful beautiful people you have brought an incredible light of joy michaela and quinn wendy and Catherine. i I am just so thankful that for being a part of this and you sharing and you have brought a shining, beautiful day to to us on uh, and radiant.
today in, in the islands. God bless you all. Oh, bless you. Stay safe out there, you know. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay. Take care, all. Thank you, Marcy.